Now that you're familiar with how to build a model in Craft Studio, we're now going to move on to the subject of texturing, also known in Craft Studio terms as painting. First, create a new model and go directly to the Paint tab. Don't bother creating any new blocks for this first part. If you click the Select Color button, you'll be presented with this window. Due to the manner in which I record this video, I can't actually show this window. So instead, I'm just going to show you this picture of it. Once you've selected a color you like, start drawing. You can only select one color at a time, and this may seem limiting. However, the way Craft Studio compensates for this is the right-click button. You can right-click a color to make it your active color. This functionality should seem very familiar if you've ever used the eyedropper in Photoshop or Paint. I suggest you make a couple blobs of each color you plan to be using, so you can easily access them later. The Paint interface actually has some tools of its own. Luckily, they aren't nearly as complex as the modeling tools, so they don't need an entire episode about them. But here's a quick rundown. This slider changes the size of your brush. The eraser tool sets the colors transparent. This can select spaces and then copy and paste them. Alternatively, you can use this to move them. Now that was all pretty simple, right? This needs to be a lot more complicated. Like, right now. Try creating a block, and see what happens. There should be a couple of noticeable differences. For example, your block is colorful. There are also these pink squares all over your texture. Surprisingly enough, these two things are related. Each box represents a face of the block. This is called an unwrap. While in the Build tab, you can move the unwrap and select each individual box to see what face it corresponds to. You'll notice that the unwrap fills the entire canvas provided. There are two ways to remedy this, and more than likely you'll need to use both of them. One option is to change the texture size, which can be accessed here in the Build tab. Alternatively, you can use the Block Size tool. Take a moment to observe how the Block Size tool affects the unwrap. Now take a moment to observe how the stretch affects the unwrap. Or to be more precise, how it does not. Something else to be aware of is the unwrap mode. You can set the unwrap mode to collapsed, occupying the least amount of space in the texture. I find this to be especially useful for solid colors, but not really anything else. You can also set the unwrap mode to custom and position each face how you see fit. I usually get the most use out of the custom unwrap mode. However, it becomes more difficult to move things around, since you have to move each face individually. Note that you can use these buttons here to rotate or mirror a texture. In the full unwrap mode, this will rotate the entire unwrap. However, in custom, it will only affect the face you have selected. Let's talk application. If you've ever looked at or configured a Minecraft skin, you should be pretty familiar with this layout. Now here's a fun fact. The full unwrap mode works the exact same way as it would in a Minecraft skin. Which means that if you were to copy your Minecraft skin into Craft Studio, you should be able to build a model around it. I challenge slash encourage all of you to do that. Well, it's been a tough climb, but I'm getting along. And after such a long time, finally feel I belong.